teachers are not just automatons who are subject driven, stand in front of a classroom and tell you things that they learned in graduate school. In fact, we are living, breathing human beings with thoughts and experiences that sometimes even extend outside of the classroom, scary as it may seem. For those of you who occasionally run into us somewhere outside of the world of GA, I know it can be a highly frightening experience. Uh, when I spend my summers at Chill on the Hill at Chestnut Hill, invariably I've just woken up from a drooly TV-induced nap, uh, and I'll see like 10 GA kids there like, whoa, like Shell House exists outside of the suit, uh, and even he eats frozen yogurt with yummy topping. So today, we want to find out what's the frozen yogurt, what's the yummy topping? of the faculty, what makes them tick a little bit outside of their classroom? Who are they? What have they experienced and why does it matter? And I'm so fortunate that we have three faculty members this morning who are willing to share with you um, some of their experiences. Um, it takes a lot of courage to stand up behind this mic and it takes a lot of courage to share with you uh, experiences that you might not know about. And so I hope you'll be especially supportive of them this morning. Um, our first speaker hardly needs an introduction. Um, in his four years at Germantown Academy, he truly has already developed a booming voice. It's a voice that resonates with so many of us and that inspires us on a regular basis. Um, in fact, this morning he'll be talking to us not so much just about a voice, but a bigger voice and an intellectual voice um, and a purpose that he's been pursuing, an invitation that he's making to you today to join him in that intellectual pursuit. So to talk to us a little bit today about the future of the new community project, please join me in welcoming Mr. Chidi Asuluji. Sophomores are reading the novel Purple Hibiscus right now, 
and it's a great novel to explore this concept. As most of you know, Ken Bealy, our main character, is a 15-year-old in Nigeria who comes from an incredibly strict but affluent family. She doesn't laugh much, but her life is comforted with privilege. She goes to the best school, drives in nice cars, and has plenty to eat at dinner. Her cousin Amaka, however, lives on the other side of town. Her house is cramped, under-resourced, but much happier than Kambili's. If we were to construct purple hibiscus as a structure, we can clearly see that the author has created a binary, Kambili on one side and Amaka on the other. When we think of binaries, we often think that one is being good and the other as being bad. In Purple Hibiscus, however, this concept is disrupted. Every year, students are debating on which girl they like the most, and sophomores know this. Some students ride with Amaka, who is the snark queen of Atsuka. And, and some ride with Kambili, the quiet, dutiful child just trying to find her voice. The debates are usually fun and chatty, but what the author has done here is powerful. She has illustrated beautifully the complicated notions of goodness and badness. Because Amaka's family seems freer and happier than Kambili's, we assume that Amaka should be the better character. And sometimes she is, but sophomores know, often she is incredibly rude and incredibly judgmental. This stirs the pot of the conflict of the novel. Both girls are fraught with trauma as they try to connect with the other. They only get over this trauma by talking and sharing their vulnerabilities. Only then do they arrive at peace. But the New Community Project takes this a step further. We ask, what if we superimpose this narrative structure to something real, like the Philadelphia School District? Instead of Kambili and Amaka being on opposite sides of the binary, what if we placed public school students and parents on one side, and the school district and the city government on the other? From reading Purple Hibiscus, we know that it would be an error to suggest that either is simply good or bad. So we brainstorm and research ways in which each side complicates the binary. Sometimes, some characteristics match up nicely with the narrative, and sometimes they don't, but these structures provide a unique entry point to investigate community issues. For instance, the notion of trauma is an interesting place to start in talking about school issues. Since both girls, Amaka and Kimbili, experience a bit of shock from their union, we can try to see if this is mimicked in the school district. Perhaps the trauma comes as a result of poor financial planning, or too large class sizes, or lack of true, real teacher-student engagement. We investigate further until we find solid proof. We also know that Kambuli and Amaka's conflicts are solved through sharing and collaboration around vulnerability. So we ask, how can we create safe spaces in schools for vulnerability within all parties within the school district? How can we encourage sharing and collaboration around this vulnerability that positively impact public schools? Through this work, you get tremendous results. Just this spring, six groups, 18, professors, Good Fortune, Easy Street, Bishop, and HodgePodge brainstormed, researched, and developed solutions based on our combined study of literature in the city of Philadelphia. Then they presented these solutions to managers and supervisors of various sectors within the city, who for one night were our sharks, each with 100,000 new community dollars to spend on one or more solution. These judges, and this is not an, an overstatement, these judges were completely blown away with the creativity of our students. In particular, they were wowed by HodgePodge's solution entitled Table Ships. Table Ships is a groundbreaking internship program that allows high school students of recently developed areas in Philadelphia to have a say in how their neighborhood is reimagined. These tablers 
will can canvas the neighborhood, interviewing longtime residents and shop owners. They will then turn, they will in turn bring these voices back to the corporate table, hence the name Table Ships, and help developers create more community conscious projects. What an opportunity for students. They learn more about the real estate industry, they learn about their community, and they learn, about how to, they learn how to build a business more responsibly and more creatively. The judges not only gave them nearly half of the entire Shark Tank money, which is $275,000, but they agreed to work with HodgePodge this summer to bring this internship to life. In the coming years, the new community project will partner with schools from all over the Philadelphia area, suburban, rural, and city. Our hope is to have as many voices and as many lenses to join this conversation. Ultimately, my dream is to have many new community projects across the country, giving students the unique opportunity to collaborate with their peers in cities like Oakland, New York, or Austin, to help them build projects there as well. Together we will form this new community, one that attempts to solve problems with humanizing and not stereotyping. Later today, Mr. Shellhouse will send you an email with more information about signing up for next year. This opportunity is open to rising juniors and seniors, and I can't wait to hear from you, and I can't wait to begin this important work. Thank you so much for your time.